Well, good morning. How about we turn around and shake somebody and go ahead and introduce yourself to the folks around you. Say hello. Welcome them. I want to say a word of welcome if today is your first day with us at Christ Redeemer. We brought the rain just for you. It's our gift to you just to kind of uh, spring us up there. I think a cold front's coming through. It is a gift for us to be together this morning. I uh, want to remind us of the goodness of God this morning. I uh, had a telephone call with my dad on Friday afternoon, and uh, it was one of those phone calls that was expected but yet unexpected. My dad's sister uh, has been struggling uh, really uh, deeply with Alzheimer's for a number of years, and, um, and so she passed away this past uh, Friday, may she rest in peace. Her name was Nanette, and uh, and so we are going to celebrate her life with a funeral mass on Tuesday. And my dad was talking to me about that experience, and um, I could hear as he was talking about his desire to be at the funeral. This, uh, I guess, this hesitancy with flying. Mom and dad don't like to fly the way they used to, and. And so as there was this long pregnant pause, I stepped into the pause and said, well, how about I drive? And he immediately jumped on that. And so it came right out of my heart. I love my, ma- my, my mom and my dad. Uh, it's, I didn't even think about it. I said, I'll drive. Then I looked at the map. <laughs> it takes a long time to get to northern Indiana from Thibodeau. And so um, it's probably going to be with stops and all, uh, I would expect about a 16-hour day, both days. And so uh, 32 hours probably in the car with my mom and my dad. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to be with them. I love driving. I love road trips. I like being in the car with people when uh, you can't do anything other than have conversation like people used to do a long time ago before phones and other things like that when we actually had to have conversations with each other. So I'm looking forward to the drive. So as I hung up the phone with Dad and I looked at uh, the trip, I I was laughing at myself, as I often do. I like to laugh at me. Um, And I was was thinking, wow, that's 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 a lot of driving. And I was thinking to myself, There's not many people that I would drive 16 hours in a car with without any thought. And then, the more I thought about it, I was like, actually, there is. I think, um, uh, not quite sure if you're uh, familiar with this kind of language, but my love language is generosity. My love language is is doing for other people or giving my heart for other people. You probably picked that up. And and so, I was looking inside my heart and said, there's a lot of people that I would drive like that with. I mean... It just came out of my heart. I didn't think about it. So I was like, I'd I'd do it for this person or for that person. Or I looked at my family and said, I'd do it for them and for them and for them. And I looked at the parish and I'd say, I'd do it for this person, that person, that person. And then this is what happened. I said, okay, would I drive like that for my mom and dad? I was like, yes. Would I drive like that for my sisters? I was like, yes. Would I drive like that for Nick Saban? I'm like, no. <laughs> but then I said, I would, right? I would do that. I'd drive the car into the ocean, right? <laughs> just, just kidding. This is my passive aggressive way of dealing with last night's game, right? <laughs> now, here's what startled me. Because I think it's honest, it's, it's important for us to be honest with ourselves and That means I have to be honest with me if I'm going to just be on the journey with with you. I noticed that there was a list of people that I would not do it for. I noticed that uh, there, there were people that used to be on this list of yes and now are on this list, which is no, I wouldn't do that. If I'm just honest with you, just... I had to come face to face with there are, are people in my life um, who I'm just, I'm tired of trying. And I hate to admit that, but if I'm going to be honest with you today, like I have to admit that. Now the good news is that I, like, whew, like the Lord spoke to me in a very beautiful way, I think is a word of encouragement to you, 
But I had to admit that there are, there are people that the Lord spoke and revealed that I struggle to love with generosity. And sometimes it's this time of year that reminds me of them. Sometimes it's this time of year that reminds us of of strained relationships or people that you find it difficult to love. Sometimes it's difficult to love because you got nothing left inside. You ever been there? Don't raise your hand or say that. But you ever been there? You got nothing left to give. You've tried, you've tried, you've tried, you just got nothing left to offer. And there can be a strain in their relationship. Sometimes uh, there's a difficulty in loving other people because of where they are in life. They're just not out of space to love you back. They're, they haven't changed their life or their ways. They don't want the relationship with inside the context of virtue or, or whatever it is. And, and sometimes it can be difficult to love because of where somebody else in life is. Sometimes it can be difficult to love, and, and I say this with, with love, because it's not healthy for us to be in their life anymore. Maybe we have had to draw some boundaries, and, and maybe because of just of a toxic nature in their own life, we've had to draw boundaries in our life, and we can't be in relationship the way that we used to, and that can, be, that can bring up grief in our heart. Whatever it is, I I don't know about you, but in my life, I have come in the last several hours face to face with the reality that it's tough to love people in my life. Lots of people it's easy to love, but just had to come face to face with, it's hard to love everybody. Amen? Let me just hit pause for a second. Because at some point, homilies become a lot less about stuff over here and a lot more about things right here. And just want to give you a couple seconds to think about that. Anybody in your life that just came to your mind? Are there relationships hard for you? Are there people that you don't want to see at the holidays that you're going to see? Or have... Have you reached a point where you get nothing left to give people close to you? Just think about that for a second. Jesus said today in the Gospel, Mark chapter 12, He said, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That can be hard. Oh, we can... We can hear the gospel and we can listen to it and we can kind of jump through the hoops at mass. And But if we're going to live this at Thanksgiving this year, at Christmas this year, if we're going to live this today, watching the Saints game, or if we're just going to have to go home inside a house where sometimes the strained or the strained most strained relationships can actually be inside our own home. Living this can be hard. To love our neighbor. I looked at my list and I'm like, huh. Hard to love my neighbor. Because sometimes you got nothing left to give. I was praying over the weekend and something dawned on me that I'd never seen before. Two things. First, Jesus gives us the second commandment when He gave us the first commandment. In other words, it's not like Jesus just kind of floated this commandment out there all by itself, independent, not related to anything. Jesus first said, 
love God, and then he said, and love people. I find that really encouraging. Because it's not that Jesus said, Jesus did not say, love other people with all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Let me say that again. He did not look at us and say, love those people that it's hard to love with all your strength and your mind and your soul. Because when you've got nothing left to give, having somebody tell you to love them with everything you got, when you got nothing left, is not going to help. What did Jesus first say? Okay, he said this. He said, okay, how about we love him with everything we have? And if what we have is difficulty, then let's bring that to him. And if we're struggling to be virtuous and to be patient and kind and generous, then bring all that to him. Jesus says that we are to love God with all of our mind, with all of our heart, with all of our soul and all of our strength. Everything that you got in here, he says bring it here. And then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Let me say that again. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. How are you loving you? How are you loving yourself? By bringing everything to him. So the way that we love ourself is by bringing everything to him. How is it that we love our neighbor? By bringing everything to him. And then here's the key. And letting Him love through us. I don't like everybody in my life. And there are some times where I have to choose to love people when I don't like them. I don't like what they're doing or I don't like the season in life that they're in. It's just tough to like them. And I don't have anything to offer them, so what Jesus is saying to us today is, okay, in those times, don't try to do the second commandment without first doing the first commandment. When you can't give people the second commandment, give them the first commandment. Go to the Lord. When you can't look at that relationship, look at the Lord. And then say this, God, I can't, but you can, and I give you permission. Let me say that again. God, I can't, but you can, and I give you permission. Let's say that together. Ready? God, I can't, but you can, and I give you permission. One more time. God, I can't, but you can, and I give you permission. God, I cannot love this person, but but you can, and I give you permission to love them through me. So, So now I'm not relying on my strength when I got nothing left, and I'm not relying on my charity when I can't I can't find any. And I'm not trying to drum up something in me that would be false. God, I can't get through November or the Thanksgiving or the holidays or the Saints game or my marriage or my kids or my in-laws or that person, whoever. I cannot do it, God, but you can. And I give you permission to love them through me. I want to encourage you today that God is real and He's with us. He's especially with us in the moments in life where we need Him the most. And if you can't love your neighbor, just do the best you can to love the Lord. And today or over the next several weeks, 
when it's hard, pray a little prayer. God, I can't. You can. And I give you permission. Amen?